Hello, my name's Drew. I am the CTO of Matter Inform. Today, we're going to be scanning with the brand new Matter Inform 3. Very exciting. It's a product we've been working on for about three years. Um, honestly, I think it's one of the best products um, out there or will be out there. I'm specifically proud of it. Uh, the scanning is unbelievable, but it has so many other little tricks up its sleeve. Uh, including full edge computing and uh, any platform uh, scanning. It's, it's amazing. So we'll get into it a little bit in other streams, but today we've had requests from some of our Redditors saying that they'd like to see some scans. Fair enough, we haven't shown any. So instead of doing just uh, posting the scans, I thought I would do a live feed. That way everyone knows uh, a little bit about the software and making sure, of course, that it is, it is for real. So uh, one of the requests was a pocket full of coins. So that's what we're going to scan today. It's a very small object, which is one of the things that 3 does well. Um, and as we know, coins can be a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult for a lot of scanners for various reasons. So uh, right now, this is the first time I've ever done this sort of setup, but you can see I'm here in the bottom right corner. Then the top right corner is the live view of the scanner here. Uh, there's my fingers and the parts that we're going to be scanning. The calibration card is not important. In fact, I'm going to remove it out of here. It's just super not important uh, at the moment. That's It's already been calibrated, so we don't need to do that. And the bed as well is just something that we can get rid of. There's the bed. We'll do that another time. Uh, we're not going to be using the bed today. All right, so uh, in it, as you can see, there is also the software. Now this is open in a browser. Right now I'm using Chrome. I'm on, uh, I'm on Ubuntu and um, you can use any browser on any system, including iPads uh, and even your phone. It's not the best on your phone because it's a small screen, but, um, but it is available on, on any modern browser, which is great. So when you go to the web page, once the scanner's hooked up, of course, my scanner's hooked up via Ethernet at the moment. Um, that's going to give us the fastest uh, communication times. Once it's set up via um, either Ethernet or Wi-Fi or Hotspot, then you'll open up your browser, go to the web page, and uh, there it is. This is not cloud computing. This is all local. This runs on the scanner itself. You do not need uh, internet to be able to do any of this stuff. I just want to make that explicitly clear. So once you get to the home page, you'll see open project page. This is where you can manage your projects. Uh, today we're going to be doing coins, so I'm just going to make a new project, we'll call it coins. And that brings us to our project window. On the project window, you've got a 3D viewer where you'll be able to see all of your scans and make edits. There are some of the tools that let you edit this. I should, I should actually caveat really quickly. This software that I'm showing you is, is alpha uh, 018, which means that it is, um, is very early on. We're a small team. We'll definitely have everything done by the time we uh, release. But we want I wanted to give everyone, um, you know, a, a look at the software before um, before it gets, you know, too, too far along. That being said, there are some features there that just don't exist yet uh, or some that are kind of broken or maybe not not fully functional. One major one is uh, the time for processing. Right now we have done zero optimization on our code and uh, it's running on a single thread. So um, you should expect a lot of the processing times to improve, but that even, even at the current state, it's, it's totally reasonable. So um, yeah, but uh, that's one of, the, one of the things that uh, we'll be working on in the future. Okay, so this in the project page here, you got your 3D viewer, like I said, and your tools. These tools don't work because we're in alpha, but they will. And then over on the right side is your scans. These are the project. Uh, this is a project window, kind of like your file um, system. And you'll be able to see all the scans that come up inside this project. Um, but because we have nothing, let's go ahead and start a scan. So right away, we see that there's two cameras. There's the camera, left camera and right camera. Uh, and this is our setup for uh, any sort of capture. I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is, of course, adjust the camera so that we see uh, both sections. You're seeing a pattern because that is what's being projected. So you can see that here. Um, this is just to help a little bit with some of the, some of the settings. Um, we do have object distance. Uh, we're going to be scanning pretty close up, so we're going to use near. These are presets, 
but you can change these values uh, by changing them. You would then have to go and recalibrate, but um, so you can set them up to whatever distance that you feel appropriate. These are um, uh, computer controlled uh, focusing uh, on the camera. So, uh, you know, right now we're focused uh, to a near distance. And I'm just going to do uh, medium quality just to show you what the, what the most normal use case is going to be. We're not going to use the turntable today. And then the rest is just setting up with the camera. And one thing with the setup for scanning is that you're going to want the exposures to be a little bit different than what you would in a normal photograph. Um, you don't want anything to be overexposed. In fact, you're probably going to be quite dim. It would look, look underexposed for a lot of things. Um, so in this case, this isn't quite good enough. The, the coins are very, very underexposed. So we're going to have to bump up the exposure quite a bit for the coins. And I'm going to go, uh, just, we'll have some tools here that will make this a lot easier for people in the future, uh, including some overlays to show whether you're outside the, um, outside the scanning exposures or not. But, uh, but for now, uh, this is what we've got. So we're just going to work with it. Sorry, I'm just trying to adjust. There we go. All right. Uh, you've also got your, you know, digital gain, analog gain, and your projector brightness. What I don't care about is the table. I don't care about the table right now. I'm just trying to capture the, uh, the, the coins themselves. But I am looking for a lot of uh, contrast between the brightness of the projector and the brightness of the room. I am in a very bright room. Uh, it's an office with uh, six fluorescent bulbs. So um, this is this is quite uh, yeah, my exposures usually need to be quite a bit darker to be able to manage uh, this sort of brightness, and then the projector needs to be all the way to the top in my in my scenario. Okay, so I think that looks good. We're going to give it a go and see how it works. We're just going to click start scan here. Um, if it doesn't work, we'll we'll adjust a few things and then try again. I am scanning. Coins are very reflective, so. Um, we're going to scan them in a couple of times. One is just by default the way that they are. And then uh, we're also going to, I, I've sprayed the other sides of the coins with a, with a matte uh, scanning spray. So I'm going to show you the difference between those two. So here we go. We've, we've got our Canadian Looney here showing up okay. It's not a highly reflective coin, so that's pretty good and some pennies. Um, but we are missing a lot of data here, obviously, and that's because of the various um, reflectivity. This this coin here is an Amazon Prime coin, some special coin from the Expanse. I really like the Expanse, so I thought I'd include it. But it's also incredibly reflective. It's it's mirror finish. So if I show you uh, show you in the in the feed down here, it's in, it's incredibly shiny. So any scanner would have a real tough time with that. Um, and for us, this is this is what we're getting. Okay, so let's flip the coins over, and you can see there's a matte spray on the other side. I'm using I'm using a sub, uh, the long lasting a sub spray, just to give a little bit better results. Now you don't have to use expensive spanning scanning spray. This is just because this is a reflective uh, coin and reflective set of stuff. I'm just going to kind of put them like that. You can also use uh, spray paint, of course, if you don't mind spraying your object. And there's a really great little trick, which is with uh, isopropyl alcohol and talcum powder that I'm going to try with a spray bottle. The one downside there is, of course, um, you have to wipe it off after, but incredibly cheap and does match your objects. Again, you do not need spray for almost all objects. It's just that uh, these are reflective objects. So let's give it a go again. In this case, we're going to uh, we're going to spray the mat. So because they're matte spray, they're, they're much closer to white, the exposure has to come way down. In fact, we're going to do about right about there. And uh, just bump up the analog gain just a tad and start scanning. Again, we're going to work on some of the tools that are going to let you know how to adjust those settings properly. Um, right now, I'm just looking for things, the, the, the brightest part of the projector to not be overexposed on the objects that I want to I capture. So I'll turn off the last scan and we'll, we'll move on in. So there we go. There's a US coin on the top and a Canadian toonie underneath. You can see quite a bit of uh, detail there. This is a mesh, but you can export all these files uh, in various formats, including 0.5 format. We'll do one more, just the... Uh, Sorry about that, hitting that. 
Uh, do one more just with the, uh, the Amazon coin. We're gonna get as, I'm gonna get as close as I can, just for a little bit of fun. That looks pretty good. And I am gonna have to adjust the exposures. You can see here, this is blown out this area here. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm lowering that to uh, much, much lower. Um, okay, then we'll start scanning. And you can also scan at high resolution and low resolution. Uh, this will change the number of points that the processing has to use. And of course, will change the resolution of your scan. It does not change the, should not change the accuracy, um, just, the, just the resolution. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, it says, uh, kind of see sideways there, the expanse, and that's an Amazon uh, Prime video experience. And there's the, the ship from the expanse show, which is great. Okay, so scanning small objects is uh, totally something that we built this scanner to do. This is a good example. And I just wanted to give everyone, um, you know, an experience about what it's like to scan uh, with the uh, with the Matter Inform three. We're going to do more live streams and more videos coming soon, including a shoe and using the turntable. And we even have scanned uh, the, uh, cars, including the, the engine box of cars. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching, and um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much.